Get this on the Triple M Network. It's myself, Tony Martin. Cheap. Oh, yep. Nasty. Yeah. And downright boring. All right, fair enough. We've got Ed Cavalier. Don't go near him. Oh. He's not worth it. He is a dirty man, Hall. Stay away from him. It's a good thing. And pushing the buttons, Richard Marsland. An awkward, painfully shy person with few social skills. Oh. Oh, if any. That's because I haven't met her yet. Okay. Oh. That is the team. That you're stuck with for this program, we're saying who's had a brush with the Z-list. Most shows like to do brush with fame. We like to go down the other end of the pool yeah, where we ourselves live. Yeah. The Z-list. Do I what? Who have you brushed up against? Well, maybe someone who brushed up against uh, what's below Z tone? Oh, Double Z? Negative Z. Oh, my, I would consider myself negative Z. And uh, the other day I met a gentleman who liked the show. He was out and about and he'd had a few to drink and I hadn't okay. uh, and uh, he, we were chatting away and he said I love the show what's happening I said oh we're not really sure we'd like to keep working together blah 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 blah. and I tried to walk off and he grabbed my hand mm. and he said no look I really like the show yes. you need and I was like no I understand and I'm very happy for you but I'd, I'd like to go to my house if I could please <laughs> he said no you don't understand I really like the show and I pulled my hand away and then he called me all sorts of um, friendly things really loudly <laughs> so for the other people around us yes yes it looked like I'd pushed him Oh. And then he had to have a go at me. Oh. So it looks like I'm walking the street, shoving people trying to be nice to me. So this Forcing is a... them to call me all sorts of Fs and Cs. And this isn't, you know, the end of the story isn't that he was from the fifth year of Big Brother. No, no, no. You're the, you're the Z list. Oh, I'm negative Z here. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. a real person. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's so a... it's a brush with you. Yeah. I would love to do brush with Ed Cavalier before no. we. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, he, the stories we'd hear. But here's an email tone from Phil McGroin. Uh, he yeah. says, yesterday at work, I told someone, <laughs> I, Richard, Phil has had that his whole life. Yeah, okay. I know. Just okay. leave him alone. And the McGroin family are constantly... Yeah, I know. And you leave know? Mr. Jask, comma, Hugh out of it too. <laughs> I'm sick of people taking the piss. Phil McGroin yesterday was at work and told someone, Richard, please. Mm. He told someone that he was going to see Greg Fleet. When yeah. one of the bosses, a hot 35-year-old, overheard, which led to a conversation about how much we both love Fleety, and after repeating quotes to each other, it quickly led to some action in the back of the shop. He's right. Greg Fleet will be wanting his cut of 10% of that I'm, action. I know <laughs> he, how show business works. But that's pretty good. That I'm not calling good. Fleety Z-list. No. Nah. Not at all, but I'm just saying that he's in the world of our show. Yeah. And they get an action. It's a top brush. I was uh, in uh, New York a few years ago and uh, trying to get tickets to some sort of Broadway spectacular, uh, trying to find the worst possible one. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, of course, everyone is so good at dancing and stuff that you can't find one that's bad. So you have to wait for an Australian production to go <laughs> over there. <laughs> Where you can really get in, get stuck in. <laughs> That'll make you popular. Sorry. But there's a certain element of truth there. And, you know, I think it was the scar. Maybe I'm scarred from the production of Cats that I saw when I was a child. Okay. When even as a nine-year-old, I was like, come on, guys, foam for cat's ears. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So you're looking for a show. We've got to bring back your Broadway beat segment yes. so that you can start getting stuck into some <laughs> inadequately positioned cat's ears. Uh, in the anyway, keep going. Well, no, it was uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel, the Ooh, musical. I thought it was going to be bad, but there's a certain level they don't yeah, fall behind on Broadway. Mm. Anyway, there weren't uh, any good seats left, uh, amazingly. Bloke in front's doing a bit of uh, Don't You Know Who I Am style work, there and he storms off, and nobody recognised him. We're going, who's that? Who's that? Yeah. Finally, someone said, it's one of the Dukes of Hazard, but not one of the two well-known Dukes of Hazard. One of the two blokes who filled in for that weird series where oh, the other two weren't oh, available. Wow. The cousins. Oh. Even they couldn't tell you their own names. I don't know who they were. But that's the saddest, don't you know who I am, oh, that I've ever heard. A real scrape with the Z-list. Can you go lower than that, Richard Marsland? I once met Dr. Harry Cooper. No, I, uh, yeah, yeah, Doctor Harry Cooper. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing was, I was a huge fan of Harry's practice, his yeah. old TV show, yeah. and I had a chance to interview him. And I wanted to ask him about the very special episode where he lost his dog called Rosie. Oh, I'm yeah, not sure yeah. if you remember that, but right. Rosie used to accompany him on all of his adventures yes. when he would yeah. go around helping other people's animals. Anyway, Rosie passed away because she was a bit of an older dog. 
And uh, I said, that was a really amazing episode because that bit where you talked about Rosie and, uh, you know, you went to her grave and you sort of cried in front of camera. I said, it was a really remarkable piece of television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A great, honest performance. Yeah. And he said, that's great. It wasn't a performance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of walked off leaving me with that. Oh, dear. Nice to meet you, Hazza. The booty. But, yeah, he was great. Yeah. Gee, yeah, it was a really a, a massive fan of Dr. Harry. Anyway, I don't know what happened to the late dog of... Dr. Harry Cooper. Another container of acid was ordered. Oh, no, 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 no that's terrible. That's not right. That's not going to wear, is it? Hopefully not. David, how are you? Pretty good. Who'd you brush, mate? Oh, the crew of Last Man Standing. Oh, oh. not Wait. even the cast, the crew. <laughs> I was by the cast. Okay, <laughs> so the cast. Now, were they, yeah. were, were they hanging out with the cast of Big Sky and Paradise Beach when you saw them? <laughs> no, they were not. I was actually an extra for the episode, and that's why. Oh, oh you were an extra in the episode. <laughs> so I'm like double minus me. <laughs> Good <laughs> on you, David. The negatives. That's pretty impressive. Hang on, David, which scene were you uh, an extra in? Um, oh, actually, I got to see... Um, it was an episode when I was on the beach, and she got to get up, and I got to see her knock. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh. There you go. That's up to wireless now. Score, <laughs> David. Score. Yeah, I think Greg Fleet was in that cast. So. He was for a little while. Absolutely yeah, right. All right. right. Good on you, David. G'day, Dylan. A friend of ours was a producer at a uh, show that Richard may have worked on back in Adelaide, <laughs> and we were around at his place one time for a little social gathering, and yeah. I bumped into none other than Anne Wills. Oh, oh. Anne Wills from wow. AM Adelaide. Yes. In Deedly Doodly. And was she tipping the bucket? Was it just all marzel and this, marzel and that? Oh, yeah, she was just on about him the whole time. Yeah. She knew what was going on with the lotion, too. <laughs> Is apparently. that right, Dylan? <laughs> Indeed. Thanks for the call, mate. We're starting to piece it together now. Lovely to talk to you. Finally, Tim, how are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. Who'd you brush, mate? Russell Mark. Oh, the, uh, hang the on, shooter. The gold yes, medalist. The gold medalist. And uh, what, uh, what was the context? Oh, well, uh, I work for a roadside service company who shall remain unnamed. Good, yes. good. And I had to go to his house and put a battery in his car. Oh, oh okay. the memories. And was That's... he just like loading a gun as you did it? <laughs> just sort of. Oh, uh, well. I don't know. Well, it might have been a rocking chair on the uh, the front porch and that sort of gear. Yeah, Look at that. Like we had him on the old show one time, and he spent six months, I think, training the Sultan of Brunei's brother. Oh, how to... You know the guy he's in a feud yeah, with Yeah, that now? guy's yeah. not... Uh... That guy, Zeppo. Yes. <laughs> of Brunei. <laughs> and he, uh, he said that he spent six months training him because this bloke was the Olympic shooting team for Brunei. And he came in last, <laughs> last in the world. <laughs> and Russell Mark said, terrible at shooting, but he did have a solid gold dunny. There you so go. That made so up for it all. all. Well, you guys have all beaten me, but I'm home to take a dump in my solid gold crapper. And Who's laughing now? And does he wear it around his neck just to show everyone? <laughs> ah, gold medal's nothing. Look what I'm rocking. I'm just filling because... Uh, it has lured Glenn over to the Bay Marie for some of his <laughs> snacks. Give him a round. That'll pan things out. I knew that. Uh, Glenn what? Roberts, welcome aboard. Good to see you, Glenn. I knew that that bite that you took of the apple with bad 10 timing. seconds to go was bad mm. timing, but yeah. I just wanted to see, you know, how someone else deals with it. You, being a professional, <laughs> leant away from the microphone, took yeah. a swig of water, and then came back. Look at you. You're licking your chops right now. No one can hear it. I used to be a function waiter. Did you? And we used to have these huge platters of, you know, the... And they have scallops and prawns Ooh. and mm. sandwiches and bits of cheese and mm. all sorts of. And there and the, there was the kitchen and there was this hallway between the function room and the kitchen. Mm -hmm. The idea being, get as much food in your mouth <laughs> as you left the kitchen, but before you got into the function room. And you, I, I could get in, I reckon, at least half a dozen prawns, a few scallops. <laughs> but then you'd have to go. At some point, you would have to go into the room. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Would you like an empty well. tray? <laughs> And what sort of waiter were you? Did you ever get to take part in that famous waiter's race? Did you ever do that? No. I was, no. A, I was a waiter at the Hilton. I was there when Ooh. Muhammad Ali came to the... Uh, I was at the, uh, at the Logies. Logies, yeah. At the Logies. Is that right? Yeah. I served Norman Gunston, silver service, when Norman Gunston was really big. Wow. And I'd lied that because I, I couldn't do silver service, but I lied to get the job. <laughs> and have you ever had silver service? No, That's never. That's where you use the spoon and the fork to serve the vegetables. Oh, yeah, And yeah. And I'm doing sliced carrots, and one of the carrots just... Takes off across the table. And it goes across the table, I swear, like a hubcap. It just was going around the peppers and salts and around the thing in the middle of the table. And then it sort of went in the middle of it. Blah, 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 blah. And by the time we go around to Gary McDonald, he just stood up and went, you know, he got out of his seat. I was so bad at um, doing silver service. Really? Wow. Mm. Rush with Norman Gunston. Were you a huge Gunston fan? He oh, was, yeah. He was massive yeah. in New Zealand. Because yep. we didn't get your, uh, your Barry Humphreys. We had no idea who he was. Right. Paul Hogan, never heard of him. 
Norman Gunson, he was like the king of Australian TV. Mm. And it was because he came out, and whereas most New Zealand television was a man in a, a dinner suit with a bow tie on and a spray of flowers going, and next up, upstairs, downstairs, followed by softly, softly task force. <laughs> and here was a bloke from Australia who had a Bay Marie on his yes. set yeah. with just a few pineapple donuts floating in it. And I think he offered some to the Prime Minister, didn't he? Did he have John Gorton Yes, on? he did. Yeah, he over. was the first celebrity interviewer. That yeah. model has been copied way down. Oh, I think he would have been the first. Yeah, he was the first sort of Ali G. But there was, yeah. people only rem- they don't remember all the other stuff. Remember the joys of funny business where he oh, was yes. his sex education yeah, segment. Fantastic. And where he'd sing to his dog. Mm. It was great stuff. All right. There you go. We're not going back there. We want to talk about free jokes, jokes yes. that cost you nothing. Should I explain what just it is? Just explain it I, I, yeah, It's just basically if when you're in a situation and something happens, yeah. Uh, you give them a joke, and yeah. if that occasion happens to them again, they can use that joke and say, that's yours, put it in your pocket, that's free, you can have it. It's a portable gag. It's, yeah, if that happens again, and I think the, one, the example I gave you, I was on an aeroplane once, and I, on a tarmac, I looked out the window, there were some birds on the tarmac, <laughs> and I said to the guy next to me, oh, that's interesting, I didn't realise they had to take off from here as well. <laughs> and I said, look, there you are, there, that's yours, take that, that's a joke, you can have that. When I've used that. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good joke. It's a great joke. He's picked it, up it, twice it, it with that joke. It killed in Brisbane. Did it? Oh, it killed in Brisbane. <laughs> free joke. And Thanks. I think the world should be full of people giving away free jokes. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I don't want to have to quote you or anything. No, no, that no, is, no. it's yours. You can have it. <laughs> anyway, I had another one the other day, and I thought it was a beauty. Would you want me to share it with you? Do it, please. Yes. Okay. Yes. We could so, use. I'm in Bali um, in a restaurant. I've ordered uh, tortellini, little um, satchels of pasta. Uh, ravioli. 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 Yes. Yes, yes. yes. I ordered the ravioli. Having the ravioli, uh, Selena had something else. I said it doesn't taste very good. Oh. And she said, give me a taste. And she went, mm, I think I know why. She said that because we're in, in, in Bali, the basil that they've used is Thai basil oh, right. and not Italian basil. Oh, okay. okay. Yep, yep. So it's quite a specific situation that I need for this joke. <laughs> <laughs> bear with me. Okay, okay, sorry, go, with with it, go, go with it. Go with it. Don't, don't question involved. it because you can adapt this joke. Okay. Get your applause ready. Ready to go. Anyway, so I said as quick as you like, so what you're telling me is that the basil's faulty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm retiring now. See, I just went, that's it. That was my... <laughs> I walked off into the night. I, who was that man? How much fun am I to go out with? Yeah. How much fun is a guy like that who makes jokes like that are good to be around? Who was that man with the basil jokes? Yes. <laughs> we learn of So him. what you're telling me is the basil's faulty. Oh. I have turned into one of those sad old men. He, he was better than the one who sang Korma Chameleon yeah. last time. I think Richard Marsden's sitting on one. Come now on. and again, my father calls after the radio show. He listens mm. and he'll call me and let me know some of the jokes I might have missed. Yeah, that's right. Opportunities show. that you could have had. Yes, here's what you should have said here. Ah, oh, good. That's good to have. You get a, a, a pen out and an exercise book and jot them down. Yeah, absolutely. I, mm. I wouldn't mind playing some of the messages because he says mm. the joke. I do. Bring and, them in. And then he repeats the joke two or three times mm. just to make sure and then explains it. He's a great mm. wicket keeper. Um, so the other day I was talking on the air about, um, it was like Friday the 13th, creepy things that have yes, happened in your house. Yes, yes, yes. And I talked about my grandmother used to eat a lot of bananas and really like bananas. Um, at one stage, a couple of weeks after she died, a banana flew across the room and yeah. hit the pantry. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. And well, that was the story. We'll come back to that, but continue. Yeah, yeah. But my father called up and left a message during the show, and he says, oh, look, I'll tell you why the banana flew across the room. It slipped on a banana peel. Oh. See? Take that, yours, yeah. use it. Anytime you want it, bang, in your See, pocket, walk away. Thanks, Dad. The thing is, Glenn, that when he told the story yeah. the first time, the banana didn't fly across the room. <laughs> it fell from a shelf Yeah. with the assistance of, oh, what's that thing called? Gravity. There it is. Well, it still slipped on a banana peel. And, you uh, thought it was a sign from the other side? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what my parents thought. And don't I mean, you I'm think, not sure what I... Don't you think if the ghosts are capable of moving bananas, they would just write a note? <laughs> just write a note to me. It's a ghost. Don't be frightened. Even if it's in banana, write the note <laughs> in banana you if you have to. Like, like, spell it out with bananas or, you know, All right, use it as a pen. Glenn Robbins is here uh, on Get This. Uh, probably the last time we'll be seeing you here at the Get This desk. Uh, Glenn, and thanks for coming in for two years and uh, improving the is program. It two years? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Gee whiz. Well, I feel very honoured. I figure I'm in the... Second last week, I made the top ten. Oh my god, he did. That's yep. true. Mm. Absolutely top uh, seven. Seven, yeah, top seven. Well, it's mm. or top eight. Top eight. Well, no, top nine.
top nine. <laughs> it's the ninth to last show. We do like you, Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, our, it's not promise. alphabetical. There's nothing in it. Don't read anything. Yeah. Well, I'm very sad to see you guys go. I hope that you move on to... Why ball. can't you be on satellite radio? Why can't you be like that guy in the States in New York? What's his name? Does Howard Stern. Howard, Howard Stern. He's well, nobody's list. I would pay to hear this show. There well, you go. We I, have... don't, I don't have um, cable, but I would pay to hear your radio show. And I'm sure there are people out there who would willingly pay. A lot of people have said that we should do like a podcast that you pay for, and that could be done. But certain things happen. Firstly, what happens with callers? on a podcast. Yes. You can't use any music. You can't use any copyright music at all. We I would be happy for you guys to come in once a week, sit around, have a chat. I just want to hear you guys. You well, know. We might come around and do it at your place, I think. <laughs> Feel we, free. The idea was we would go to all of the listeners one by one yep. and do the show. I'll bring the doll. But we'll be doing something. Don't worry. <laughs> something will be happening. Yes. And, and we were talking about Toto before. Yeah, I was talking about Toto. I'm glad you didn't yeah, bring the music. Oh, 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 oh. I have a good reason for this, Rich. I don't want to be predictable. Why have you brought this up again? Okay, well, thank you to all the people who have emailed me this information. I don't think you guys are ready for this news. What? what? This is massive. Yeah. Yeah. MC Hammer's back. In March 2008, <laughs> the legendary Toto are returning for a rare and upfront national tour of Australia. Oh, fantastic. What are they going to do after Africa? They'll do that? Rosanna. Yes. They'll do Hold the Line. Hold the Line. They'll do Georgie Porgy. <laughs> <laughs> Have a song, I'll Be Over what? You. Yeah, and let me guess, uh, 30 <laughs> seconds into Georgie Porgy, they'll stop and they'll do Africa again. Okay. <laughs> Under a rain of bottles. Does it say how many people are currently in Toto? Can I get a gig doing percussion it's one night? kind of like the witness protection scheme. <laughs> it's pretty much. Don't worry, mate, we'll put you in a Toto for a couple of years. <laughs> Nobody will find you in there. <laughs> They've lost a couple of members along the way. Of course they have. Final Tap style. <laughs> yeah. um, well, there's an injury going on. Anyway, but performing all their hits, Pamela, I Won't Hold You Back. Pamela? Bottom of your soul. Mm, God. You can't just write a few words. Like when they've gone, all right, Toto, we're going to go on a tour. No, no. All right, we'll do Africa. We'll do Hold the Line. What other songs we got? Oh, I just write any old crap down. <laughs> Pamela. Yeah, there's a song called Pamela. Um, Probably. Uh, uh, coffee bottom. mug. That was one of ours. <laughs> uh, Pen. Cashing in. Do Uncle Cashing in. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, get ahead of the rush. Ticket's on sale from November 26. Or well, ticket uh, will Jeez. go on sale very soon. <laughs> Won't they be that. furious to discover they can't come on get this to promote oh, it? Oh, man, they, that'll be really when they kicking get... the teeth. Look at those guys. What is our topic today? Talking what have you built, Tone? What have you built from scratch yourself? Absolutely right. Now, this is why we're doing it. Look at this. Time for Melbourne to stump up. In one of the newspapers today, it says that Melbourne's a, a, a growing city, perhaps the fastest growing capital city in Australia. Mm. Oh, okay. Problem being, yes. no monuments. No monuments. It says here, look, Sydney's got two monuments that are the envy of the world, the Sydney Harp, you know, the Opera House yeah. uh, and your bridge. Rome's got the Colosseum, etc., yeah, etc. Yeah, et yeah, and yeah. then locally in Australia, mm. Adelaide's got Beale Gardens, uh, the, <laughs> the 500 metres of new tram track, the Adelaide Oval and plenty of shallow bush graves to go around. <laughs> Brisbane has the Story Bridge and the birthplace of Sam Bacco. Now, Melbourne doesn't... Monuments, there's the, the monument to Galen from Big Brother. Oh, that's very Six. true. I think that's going up. Yeah, I think it's just a gutter. Uh... And, uh, and he's in there, which is nice, <laughs> doing daily appearances. But you know now they're going to be like, oh, what's going to be our landmark? And they're going to try and spend heaps of cash mm. or turn something that's kind of not landmarky into a landmark, yeah, like right, cafes right. and stuff like that. Right. That's not the way to go. What? We've got a landmark at our house. Look at this, the toilet that we built. Oh, you're the illegal toilet. Now, we've already had plumbers call us up mm -hmm. and say... The, you know, you should expect a visit from the council. Well, he's a, he's and a, possibly the police. Here's an email from Do Chabag, yep, yep. Uh, and he says that Ed's dodgy toilet taints <laughs> Melbourne's water supply, <laughs> which is lovely. It's diminishing water supply. But what it's doing, Tone, is it's dragging the kids in. People want to see the toilet. Yeah. So we what do you build. Mean? What people? <laughs> it's just locals. What people are booking through Ticketmaster. <laughs> yeah, locals to Lo go to Ed Cavalier's house. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Heard you've got a toilet. <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> Come out here to the shed. Come and hang out for a bit. Yeah. Do you want a West Coast cooler? That kind of gear. So we've built the toilet from scratch, and it's it's dragging people in. I want to know, what have you built? What have you built, listeners? What have you built? Tony Martin? I haven't built anything since I was a kid, I don't think. I'll tell you what I built when I was a kid. The world's longest slide made out of fridge box cardboard. Pretty good. Because uh, my stepdad had a fridge shop, mm -hmm. and he would bring the old fridge boxes home. How long once. was it? It was, I reckon... Probably nearly a block in length. Oh my, that's really good. So you get all of the fridge boxes, you you cut them down yeah, one yeah, side, yeah. You, so they're flat they're now, flat. Yeah, yeah. and then you, I think it's the shiny side up, and then you, you know, I can hear Lawrence Mooney in the yeah. background, yeah, ooh. Giving, <laughs> making sounds that suggest this isn't going to be structurally sound. Yeah. Okay, so but and then you you uh, use tent pegs yeah. to peg them to the side of a hill. 
How do you join them up though? Because in the join, your ass will you drag just, on the ground. Well, no, you just overlap. So overlap. It's, it's barrel of monkey style down overlap. the hill. <laughs> and you know, once you start doing it, you go, "Well, this could go for this could be a freeway basically <laughs> the other side of the hill." You've got something you can't see the bottom of, and then you get you know one single strip of fridge box. That's the toboggan, oh. and down you go. How was it? Oh, it was oh. Jackass Three. Oh man, injuries. Talk about injuries. <laughs> oh, people got a week off school, just covered in carpet burns, and of course. Holes that had been ripped in them by the tent pigs. Well, that that's still sticking out. <laughs> of the necessary ground. evil tone. Necessary evil. Richard Marsland. And I think the idea was that when you got to the bottom, you were supposed to have built up enough speed that you would knock over the tower of stolen uh, shopping trolleys <laughs> wow. and milk crates. Oh. The whole thing was ill-conceived. Boxes of chickens. Very Fantastic. few survivors. Yes. <laughs> a, a friend of mine, when he was moving out of his place that he was renting, you know that question that everyone asks themselves when they're moving out of a place that you're renting. What, Should I trash the joint? What can we steal? Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Uh, okay, light yeah. globes, yeah. garden hoses, that kind of thing. I'm already looking at some stuff around <laughs> yeah. here. That Green Day standee <laughs> will be mine. Mm, mm. A friend of mine had his eye on the extra tool shed that's oh, in the backyard because yeah, okay. there was three of them, and he thought that maybe the <laughs> landlord wouldn't notice if one just goes missing. <laughs> We took that baby down, took it to the other house, assembled it, but we forgot that the backside of the tool shed mm -hmm. is actually up against the fence, which yeah. provided a fourth wall. Yeah. So really, we just have a tool shed that's just like an open... It's basically like a proscenium arch. Oh, beautiful. So if we ever put any sort of you know backyard presentation right. on... Maybe some stand-up comedy, maybe a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of live theatre. Then the tool shed is the perfect place. To live do from the stolen tool shed. Why would someone have three tool sheds? That's just suspicious. It's, it's, that's just human skin suit country. Sure. One for tool, one for meth. I don't know what you used the third one for. One Spare meth. <laughs> Please call us now. What Tell have us, you built? What have you built yourself with your own hands on the end of your own arms? Hi, Sue. Um, well, I think my parents probably should have known better, but I actually wanted a couple of rabbits when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. and they actually said to me, if you want to keep them, you can build yourself a rabbit hutch. Mm -hmm. So I did. I built it out of polystyrene boxes, <laughs> and I painted it. Yes. And the next morning, um, I didn't have much of a rabbit cage left and I had two dead rabbits. Oh, two Beautiful. dead rabbits. It's a touching story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the ABC is making a, a kids' television series out of that story, aren't they, Sue? Isn't that new prison they're building down in Melbourne? Isn't that made out of polystyrene? <laughs> they won't get out of that. It's going to end badly. Thank you, Sue. Well done. Get, G'day, Peter. How are you? Well, when I was at school, primary school, in grade three, I built myself a gun. Um, oh, wow. School, yeah. yeah. Um, and it didn't go over too well because it wasn't your ordinary gun. It was made out of a bit of 4B2 we got from an offcut from the house that we were renovating. Yes. And I'd used one of those rails from the uh, the old-fashioned drying cabinets as a barrel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about four feet long, and it had a faux ammunition belt, <laughs> a big upside-down V on the front underneath. Anyway, the long and the short it was, I took it to school, and the principal said... You can't bring that monstrosity to school. It's mm. too big. Mm. <laughs> Smaller well, guns, please, kids. <laughs> Smaller guns. That's right. Obviously, the uh, replica Colt 45 I had in my pocket was all right. Um, <laughs> That's fine. So, Good well, on you, Peter. You know, this was an earlier time. You know, mm. when we were younger, taking guns to school was just a bit of fun. Along was it? Was drink a bit of driving fun, yeah. and smoking and <laughs> domestic violence. Drink driving. Part of the Australian way back in those days. Thanks, Peter. Good to talk okay. to you. A gun at school. Who else has built something? G'day, Prue. How are you? Well, when I was a kid, my dad built me a mezzanine level in my bedroom. <laughs> was that, uh, are we talking just a couple of milk crates with a plank of wood? No, no. It was, it was like Ford made out of um, fencing timber. Well, and how big is the bedroom? <laughs> well, <laughs> it was about 10 foot high, but it still meant that when you woke up in the morning, you hit your head on it. <laughs> your head on it. the mezzanine. And Prue, what, yeah. were you, what were you doing on your mezzanine? Entertaining well, ambassadors? I had all and... like, nerd items up there, you know, <laughs> like videos and so you really Star Wars say figures. Mezzanine, you just mean shelf, really, don't you? No, it was like, really, it was, <laughs> it was another world up there, Tony. <laughs> another world. I love how <laughs> And my first attempt to climb it, like, he built a ladder for it as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. My first attempt to climb it, and it's like, the ladder has completely fallen to the ground. You didn't nail it on. Yeah, shouldn't have made a polystyrene ladder. That's probably your problem. Uh, well, good. that's an amazing coincidence because when Ed uh, was a youngster, I understand his dad uh, made a food court in his bedroom. Absolutely right, yeah. Just uh, on my uh, on my request. <laughs> 13 different kebab shops. Brought in a number of families, set them up, and away they went. One more builder, please, Ed. G'day, Bronwyn. How are you? Bronwyn? Builder Bronwyn. 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 Come on. Oh, Bronwyn's gone. She's, She's gone. built yep. a wall of silence oh. on national radio <laughs> all by herself. She's off to make a mezzanine. Lawrence Mooney. Hey, it's yeah. very nice to be in here. Oh, it might be the last time we get to see you on this show, Lawrence. Um, can I uh, first of all say that I was um, uh, really sad to hear that you guys are going oh, off thanks, Triple M thanks, for a moment, and then my comedic self-interest kicked in, and I started... <laughs> 
<laughs> pitching shows to Triple M. Of course you did. In your time slot. <laughs> and uh, I've come up with some great ideas. Let's uh, hear them. Come on. Uh, for the first one, I said, what about a show called Get That? Yep. <laughs> um, we'll get uh, Tony Martin from Wildside. Oh, good, yeah. Good, Ed good. Phillips. So not much changes. <laughs> and uh, I'm driving the whole Richard thing. Wilkins. Uh, and, uh, yeah. uh, Richard Wilkins. Richard Wilkins behind yes, the desk. So <laughs> Richard, Tony Martin and Ed and, uh, and me permanently. And oh, they went, we it. love it. We love it. Yeah, what did you give them in the way of content, though? What did you say you were going to be talking about? Uh, I said we'll be talking a lot about what happens in Dolly Magazine oh, uh, and on Big Brother. Yeah, yeah, well... That's pretty much it. <laughs> You're out of the blocks, Lawrence. <laughs> you are out of the blocks. When you were here last time, you were talking about the last comic standing. Mm. How did that end up? That ended up with the guy from North Carolina winning. Uh, his name's John Reap. Right. And uh, he was... Uh, what was he doing right that you weren't? Well, interestingly enough, I looked at it in retrospect as a casting exercise and I thought, they're going to have a large black guy and a black woman and yes. a white woman and there was a couple of white guys around about my age and ilk and he was one of them and I thought, it's you and it's me and a few others playing off against one another for the white guy posse. Right, so it's a bit of a United Colours of Benetton approach to comedy. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, it's a casting exercise and uh, what I thought he was doing right was uh, American Americans really, uh, uh, stand-up comedians, talk about their families a lot. Oh, and right. he, he had a lot of anecdote about his family rather than the you know larger observational stuff. And do you not take that approach? You... Well, I do, but I didn't in that particular semi-final, okay. <laughs> which I've learned from. Lessons to be learned. But he had a uh, real charm too, and uh, he's a worthy winner. I'm, I'm very glad for him. I always love won. to ask comedians this. How do you go with doing material about your family? Uh, do you wait till... You know, they're not in town. Do they find out what you're saying about them? My mum's never been to see one of my gigs, Tony. Really? So uh, she is the butt of all of my oh, jokes. Wow. No, she uh, she comes and sees me if I do a comedy festival show. Oh, but yeah. she won't come to a public house. No, really? Because really? they're common. Yeah, that's, uh, that's and do you get that's notes? quote unquote too a public house. Isn't it nice that someone calls a shitty bar a public house? <laughs> but does your mother like give you what sort of comments do you get? What sort of reviews when she does see one of your shows? This kind of thing. She goes, "Well, I thought it was very good, but Bing Crosby and Groucho Marx didn't need to swear." <laughs> Apparently, say, yeah. They- <laughs> Jesus, they've never played the Epping Cricket Club, Mum, you know. (laughs) They had writers. It was a very, you know, genteel time in the 30s and 40s. I think uh, any interview with Bing Crosby's children will suggest that your mother is wrong. (laughs) Lawrence Mooney is with us. This is the music he likes to put on in the boudoir. Yes, he's game show man. And I come in uh, wearing a collar and tie, a suit... (laughs) Jacket and no pants. Oh, yeah. And if and say, uh, hey, lovely lady, would you like to go to the gift shop? Ow. <laughs> and mm. when things go badly, you hear... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're not talking Bow-bow. about that. We're not talking about that. We're talking bad tats because this bloke uh, in Geelong... Now He's he must... really done a good job, this guy. Yeah, he, he got a tattoo and... Uh, it all... He got it in Thailand tone, which yeah. is always a bad idea. So you I only reckon. go to Thailand for surgery. Yeah. That's, all, that's <laughs> right. what I know about it. You only go there for the cheap surgery and... You know, it just and, and the beach is Richard, yeah. and to see Thailand, the, the, to you. enjoy the temples. Of yes, it's wonderful. not all gender reassignment. No, absolutely <laughs> right. You can go up to Chiang Rai and hang out. <laughs> Chiang Mai? No, oh, Chiang Rai. Right. It's further north from Chiang Mai. Right, really? It's, it's, it's right up the road. Oh, oh. you know, I okay. had a friend who went to Thailand yeah. and got one of those henna tattoos, mm-hmm. and then after the henna wore off, there was just a weird scar there in the shape of the tattoo. There was like a rash, an infection, wow. right, in the shape of a dragon. Okay, pretty good. Now yeah, this okay. bloke, uh, if we what got did a, he get? We got a clip from the news. Just play that first, Richard. The man who wants hey, to remain anonymous wrote instructions to proudly display his allegiance on his shoulder. After 15 beers, he realised ah. the Phuket artist took him literally. Mm. I can't believe he wrote right arm. It was just to tell him what what I wanted on the arms. A suspicious spelling mistake, only adding to the embarrassment. Can I say, say gay premiers instead of gay. Okay, so firstly, he said he's obviously done a picture for the guy. He's gone right arm. Put this. So the guy's tattooed yeah. the phrase right arm. <laughs> then well, it's, it's accurate. What's it meant to say? Uh, it's meant to say night premiers 2006. Uh, and then on the other arm, to distinguish from the fact that they won the night premiership yes. last year, he's put day premiers 2007. But the guy's written gay premiers. Gay premiers. And then what nobody's pointed out <laughs> is... It looks, They're gay. It looks to me like it's just Jalon. Like yeah. The second 
G in Geelong doesn't seem to be well, there. Well, he's taken the G off Geelong and put it on Day Premiers. <laughs> so okay. That is a tack gone wrong. I, I reckon if they've misspelt Geelong and written gay on your arm tone, I don't reckon Geelong's your first <laughs> port of call. No. You know, it's not even the first thing you're complaining about. But wasn't, uh, didn't Johnny Depp have a tattoo That's of right. yeah. Winona Forever? Yeah. And, and then he changed it to Wine Forever? Wine. Wino. 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 Wino Forever. Yeah. Very nice, nicely done. No, that's not good. No. Well, that's it, always a bit shit. That's and funny. and what's more, your ex girlfriend knows that it used to say something else, yeah, and she'll right. always be a little bit angry. And then, well, we've heard about Warwick Kappa, who keeps dating women with the same name, well, Joanne, so that it'll match the Joanne tattoo he's got. Mm, that's right. not a bad one. Do you, you don't have any tattoos? Do you? Like? I've got so much. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, wow. Taking my shirt off. Dirty on. There you go. Oh, What's on the back? Oh, what have we got? That, can you describe what you see, Ed? Uh, well, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Don't bring it. <laughs> don't bring it close. <laughs> don't bring it closer. <laughs> oh, he's rubbing on me. Okay, it's a goose. Uh, <laughs> it's a. It's a cormorant. Oh, it's a, a cor- cormorant. It's a cormorant, it's a cormorant. on a uh, on a lollipop uh, <laughs> for the Liverpool sign, and then on the left hand side, it's uh, well, it says "Gay Premiers." I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, Moon Man. It's actually uh, no, it's, it's a lovely little. It's tr- a lizard in a tree. It mm. means. Uh, oh. Fortitude and prosperity. How do you go when you go into the tad parlour and say, just a cormorant, mate? <laughs> um, They're across the cormorant story, are they? Well, the the tattoo parlour that I went into, uh, there's strict no drinking. See, this man's had 15 beers. Yeah, that's and he's right. in Thailand. And uh, strictly no drinking or drugs of any sort. Right. Not even, you know, lighting up a cheeky spliff and... Uh, <laughs> oh, not even. Not even. And uh, through the window that I was sitting in getting my tattoos, there was a woman uh, getting the full Japanese, you know, samurai warrior with oh, the yeah. cloak. Oh, yep. uh, it was already outlined on her back and they were colouring yeah. it in red and, and blue. And uh, she had to have her top off. So occasionally okay. she'd turn around to get a drink of water and I'd see a bit of boob. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, it's only Ed comes in tomorrow covered in tats. <laughs> the illustrated man tomorrow. Uh, now, last time we did this, I think the segment was called Justify Your Tats, and Ed and Richard Uh-oh. tried to sing a live theme. How did that turn out? Waiting. Oh, God. Belching. Mm. Yep. Wanting. Yep. <laughs> For you <laughs> to justify <laughs> your tats. Your tats. Okay, I don't think we... Ever need to hear that again, Lawrence? Yeah. I should apologise for the word <laughs> belching. I it was I, a bet. I, it was a bet from George was, Mac and Crow. I was going to say, was that belching? It was. He got a hundred dollars worth of free food out of that yeah. song. What does felching mean? Uh, we no don't idea. need to know in this time slot. Listeners, <laughs> give us a call. Get a ash. Uh, yeah, when I was in the army, uh, a couple of boys uh, got a few tattoos, as you do. Yep. yep. And we've taken a picture in of. Um, the kangaroo is a symbol of our unit. A kangaroo with two cross swords and a crown. Fantastic. We told the bloke, just um, put some balls on that kangaroo, mate, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> How big <laughs> were they? <laughs> oh, oh okay. size. Are we talking Buster Gonad size or? <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, the elephant titus of the, you know what? There you go, Ash. Well cleaned up. <laughs> and it lasts forever. Okay, that's a tech. <laughs> Thanks, on, Ash. Rob. I'd love to see that on the 50 cent coin. Actually. Oh, that'd be lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who else has got one? G'day, Sean. Um, it's not me, it's this bloke on you. And he oh, yeah. got a tat, and it took about five years for anyone to really pay any attention to it. It's this big tribal thing across his back. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, we're all sitting around one day at the pub, and in the corner of it, I noticed something, and I said to him, you know, what's that on the end of your spiral there? And, Everyone sort of gathered around, had a look, and their tattoo artist had drawn a penis at the end of one of his files and coloured it in. Oh, and it took five years for that to get noticed. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I, I just think that, you know, Lawrence, if someone drew a penis on you, you'd notice it in quicker than five years. I, yeah, I well, think... That's what was funny about it. We were a bit surprised. <laughs> Not a man's back. You know, why don't we just stick to the upholstery of public transport <laughs> for penises? <laughs> and Richard Marsden's page on Wikipedia. Thank right. you, Sean. Uh, somebody who people love to hear about uh, is Jihad Jack. Mm. Oh, yeah. And Nick Hurst says, can we please play our musical salute to Jihad Jack? One final time. Have you got it there, Rich? They call him Jihad Jack. <laughs> Who knows when he will launch a sneaky attack? <laughs> Come on, his facial hair, it's quite suspicious. A beard with no tash. I think you know what I mean. He's Islamic and that, or something like that. I'm sorry, haven't quite got all the facts. They call him Jihad Jack. <laughs> I hear apparently he trained at some camp 
And something else about his wife It said that they've never met I mean, how suspicious is that? He should have gone to NIDA Not Al-Qaeda Oh, so I read somewhere life's sweet Yeah, now the Jihad Jack is off the street Life is sweet, now Jihad Jack is off the street There's a smile on the face of everybody that you meet I've gone and got myself a great big plasma screen So thanks for that <laughs> Jihad Jack Life is sweet, now Jihad Jack is off the street Got more sandwiches than I could ever eat <laughs> And a table tennis table that's concrete So thanks for that Jihad Jack. Hooray for Jihad Jack. Let's hope Osama never smuggles him back. You know, somehow I think we've grown to love him despite all the facts like him meeting that bloke with the teeth. He's deadly as hell, but cuddly as well. Trotting through the car park in his manacles. Hey, check out Jihad Jack. I think he's gonna get his life back on track He needs to go back to the life he had But with less jihad Maybe take up guitar Keep your head down and then Call Harry M He'll <laughs> tell you what to say and when And then you go on dancing with the stars and I just should say, Jimmy Barnes, huge supporter of this program. Yes. Really nice. He's been making some calls. Big fan of the show. He says, if there's going to be another support rally, he wants to sing a song. Which song? I don't know. I yeah, think that, he is a, that is a good question. Venga bus? When the war is over. Venga bus would be <laughs> great to hear. Venga bus. <laughs> now you'll come up with something, you know, especially. I, I'm sure he will. Oh, oh okay. The trouble oh. is all the rallies have been, the local ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the London Save This Git rally is mm-hmm. uh, gearing up. What's the on the weekend tone, yeah. uh, the latest is they're going to make up T-shirts uh, with our faces printed on them. Yeah. Uh, last count, there was one uh, very enthusiastic... <laughs> Young man. I Let's think the numbers get... have since doubled. So, oh, is that right? You, know, you might want to get onto the stats well, there. Police have been called. <laughs> they will be controlled. Well, maybe Barnes, you'll be part of that. I don't know. Thank you, Jimmy, for your support. Yeah, uh, nice. I should point out it's not just all Barnesy classics. We're broadcasting here from Broadway. Oh, here we go. Again. Top hats, everybody. One. Hey. Singular <laughs> sensation. Every little step she takes. <laughs> wow. That's uh-huh. some dancing skill. Ed Cavalier. Uh, now, what have you got for us here? A treat. Look at this, Tone. The news is coming thick and fast. Yes. We're talking emails, but there's still things going on around the world. Oh, real know. stuff. Yeah, mm. sure. Naked yep. man gets tasered in the ass. I... <laughs> is that the headline in which paper uses the word ass in the banner? I may have altered it oh, slightly. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say. Yeah. I think it said idea. wazoo in the financial <laughs> review. <laughs> EI. Uh, a man who stripped off at a university concert was tasered in the ass by police as they tried to handcuff him. Ah. No, it wasn't Kevin Rudd. It wasn't <laughs> Richard. Okay, no, nah, wrong. How dare you? Trouble began when the man who was asked to leave by security guards began to strip off and then the police were called. Police asked the then topless man to put his clothes back on, but instead... <laughs> He began to remove his pants. When he finally removed the last article of clothing, his underwear, they seized the man and began handcuffing him. When he resisted, they used a taser. I didn't do anything! Don't tase me, bro! Don't tase me! I didn't do anything! Ow! 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 Ooh, me university plums! (laughs) Hang on. Sorry. It's a delayed plum. (laughs) It's a delayed drop. Mm. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it's good to have current affairs out of the way. <laughs> With a boing. Get this at the new time of 2 o'clock. Or in Adelaide, 3 o'clock. On the Triple M Network.